record to this computer. Okay. Hi, everyone. We are doing our lesson on Build a Big Workshop, uh, page 139 with Build Your Prosperity. So the first reading was on page 176 of Build It Big. Um, what did what did you get out of this? This was interesting. I was as I was doing it, I was in the car, and I was uh, sharing things with Darwin, <laughs> saying, "Do you do this when you do our taxes? <laughs> you know, do you?" <laughs> I was kind of examining his technique to see how it fit in with what they were suggesting. So what did we get out of the first reading? I think we covered a lot of that last week too with the organization skills we were going over when yes. Flo brought up the files and stuff. So yeah, um, really it, was, just it was kind of blending in with last week, wasn't it? Yes. Well, I know that part of what I read is for tonight's readings, I felt like I was having deja vu. Yeah. <laughs> Some of it because was it felt like I read that whole section already. Yeah. So, so it, was, kind of, it was kind of a continuation of that. Um, the business manage, management software, I was asking Darwin if he used like a, a direct selling software or he said that he knew there was one out there but you know with him doing our taxes together home-based business and and mine um but there was in the reading i believe that dswa has um some record keeping uh, things offered too. So my husband downloaded something on my computer um, to help me keep track of it. But you know what? I I was in accounting um, out at uh, the BP refinery in Whiting, and I, I worked accounting and payroll out there. And darn if I could figure this program out. I don't know what the heck this thing is, but I can't figure it out for nothing. And he's just he goes, well, it's relatively easy. And Dan is very smart in that area. And he sits down and he goes, why did I download this to your computer? He goes, this is crap. So now we have to find something else. <laughs> well, what I, found, what I, yeah. I found something I haven't really been playing around with it too much yet. Um, it's a Microsoft Excel file I found in another group. Um, it's Avon. It's, it's Avon representative e-business records, uh, Excel with formulas. You now know, I can and, actually do that with the with the formulas with Excel because I took classes for that and I can I can put a sheet together I could put formulas on it I can have them adding things in columns and then on different pages I know how to do all that stuff and I probably could have if I wanted to take that kind of time but it's a time consuming process. Well, the, this is one that's already done. I'm going to load it. It's going to take a moment because I'm having a little bit of an error with my Microsoft Office because. Microsoft Office, the newest uh, Microsoft Office um, was trying to charge me money. So I uninstalled it and it took out a file of the 2007 Microsoft Office. And I have to totally remove 2007 and totally reinstall. So, but it's taking a moment to load because it's got a uh, configuring the home office is what it's doing. It's a quick thing. But I was just going to tell you some of the categories that's in it so you can see what I'm talking about. because. <laughs> I've been looking for the last couple of years on a nice, good, um, like spreadsheet thing because I'm I'm good at Excel too, because I keep a monthly budget and I use Excel for that. So, so I always know exactly how much money I have left out of my check each month when, you know, you know. So, well, this nice. is just taking a moment. To, you know, just just taking a moment to load here. Yeah, it's got to configure. I just haven't done anything there reinstall it yet so i have to uninstall it then reinstall it. i tried reinstalling on what's already there but it wouldn't pick that up so um it, it, the error is still there so i'm at the totally white but there we go now it's loading i'm sorry i was killing time while it was loading <laughs> we knew that we knew that <laughs> yeah, we, kind, we kind of uh <laughs> Under earnings, you got your total sales, sales from customer receipts, leadership bonuses, first category. Second category, total earnings, which is your deductions, your cost to Avon products, demonstrations, brochures, samples, 
it just goes right on down the list. Postage and shipping fees, all that, all the way down that list. And it's got the formulas already in it. As you enter everything in, it's going to tell you. But I haven't started using it yet, but um, I'm going to be using it here pretty soon. Because it's got everything like public transportation. You have to take a bus. Open house supplies, refresh, refreshments. Accounting and tax preparation fees. It's all on there. Vendor so it's fees. all kind of related to an a, what an Avon representative would use. Yeah. Well, that's what this is. The title of it is Avon representative business record. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it sounds like the old record sheet we had before that was not PDF and somebody just formatted it into a PDF on an Excel well, spreadsheet. Same categories. This isn't a PDF, though. This is an Excel sheet. Excel, yeah. We oh. used to have a sheet you printed that was a right. PDF you could print, and you mm -hmm. had to manually do it. And now it's it seems like they took that PDF and put it into an Excel spreadsheet. That well, I've, I've been been because Excel, mine, I love having it in the Excel as well. And of course, you tweak it every year because if you do fundraisers or if you do open houses or vendor shows, you got to put right. all those fees and stuff yeah. in there. Because under earnings, it's got your leadership bonuses. I mean, it's got everything that you need for everything with the um, with your business, including like uh, product display supplies. Um, you know, like for your like your phone, your phone expenses, office supplies, gifts to customers or charities. Maybe sales Roger, sales you sales. can put a link um, in the BIB Club. Um, for for others to to pull that up if they want to. In the, uh, the only way I could do that is maybe upload. I can't really put a link because this okay. is on my computer. Okay. I can upload. Yeah, it, it's an Excel file. I can upload it to the BIB group right now while we're talking. Yeah. You know, yeah. That way, chat. that way, everybody that is interested in it can look at it and compare it to what they use. Right, but I'll, I'll send it to the BIB group chat, right. not not your team chat. Right, so. right, the BIB, because that's this group, so. Right, and I'm going to go ahead and do that while we're talking, so. Okay, um, so was there anything else on the get control of your business finances, or we'll move on to the next one? Although, well, I'm not sure exactly which section, but there's in one of the books, there's something that stuck out. I actually underlined it. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see which one it was, because I did underline it. There's a section in here. Um, okay. The something next about, did you know that, that uh, more millionaire, it's something like the, the respect that. Right, I, I, I think I, it's in the, the seven money. It's right here. It, it's in the, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's in the uh, uh, build, as you build it, build it big with tax incentives. Direct selling has made more millionaires than manufacturing finance or even the lottery. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the one that caught me. It's like, wow. Yeah. Where's me? <laughs> That's right. But it did, it did take you through things that, you know, the skills of, of extremely prosperous people in the BIB page 185, I wrote down those seven skills. Uh, it gave me some thoughts in there, like, am I on a regular basis donating 10%? Probably something I need to work for. Um, yeah. I did that the easy way. I did that the easy way to save money and it's working for me. Instead of the 10%, I have an Avon checking. I have two checking accounts. Um, one of them's for my Avon. And the way that's set up is every transaction that I make using my Avon account is going to automatically pull a dollar for each transaction and put it into a savings account. And that that's actually building up now. So yes, <laughs> so that's like that. point number three, saving 10% of your earned dollars. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's kind of according to that, you know, um, the other thing that was kind of interest to me was number six, the shield, you know, making your business a corporation or an LLC um, as kind of a shield for yourself independently that you, um, you know, if for some reason you would ever get sued, they, they couldn't sue you personally they, you know, could only, you know, sue your, 
business, you know, so that's something uh, I know that we've talked about um, Darwin and I, so. We have nothing to protect. <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? I'm, Darwin, and I'm actually kind He's, of agreeing with him on that. He said we have nothing to protect. <laughs> I'm kind of agreeing with Darwin on that one. Oh, and by the way, that file is in the chat is in the chat group now. Okay. Awesome. All right. Thank so you. we can look for it there. Um, anything else on the money skills? It reminded me of something my dad always said. He said, don't work harder, work smarter. Mm -hmm. So that kind of wraps this whole thing up, too, because if you're smart with what you're doing, you don't have to work that hard. And, and be smart. smart with your money aspect. Yes. Yes. Right. right. And organizing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I dreaded tax time every year in the beginning of my journey with Avon. And it's because I wasn't organized and it would be like a month of getting it organized at the end and my husband go did you do the taxes yet no because all of the organizing I had to do at the last minute so doing that excel spreadsheet I'm done in a week I mean this is something that breaks everything down and boom I turn it into my you know accountant and he takes it from there so it makes a world of a difference so again working smarter not harder and making yourself crazy if you're organized it makes a world of a difference so I love this breakdown <laughs> You know, with that file I just sent to the chat group, I get to sit down with that with the last uh, campaigns, 1 through 26, 2020. So, yeah, I, yeah. so that's going to be a pain in my pain in my side, yeah. you know, but then at the same time, I got to start using this every campaign. Mm -hmm. I just have to rename it to tw for 2021. Yeah, you know, so just so having a try. format makes your life so much easier. Knowing my, my exactly is, you can claim and what to put in there my, my thing is is that I'm, I'm not good at the record keeping end of it it's it's i am but i'm not not as as detailed as this file is mm -hmm. so i think that's really going to help me out so i get to yes. deal with it twice i gotta get all of last year's put into it then save that under Start one name then entering all of this year so i'm gonna be going blah, 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 blah. my eyes will be all crossed and everything <laughs> <laughs> but you'll get that whole and you but that goes okay. into our next chapter, which was claim your deductions, right? And okay. that was in the more build it big, page 162. And I think this is exactly what Roger said earlier. Most self-employed have overpaid taxes by $160 billion. Well, that one that I was talking about was on page 165, the one that I mentioned. Okay. Is it to build it big with your tax incentives? Okay. That's, that's, you know, I pulled that out of the, uh, you know, where it says Uncle Sam wants you, the last yes. part of that paragraph. Okay. That's where I pulled that from. Mm-hmm. Well, I actually underlined it. <laughs> okay, so anyone else want to share what they got out of um, those those two readings then? Well, with this one right here, it brings me up some questions because I'm going to start um, with the headache of putting all, all 26 campaigns into that file so I can get my taxes done again this year. I have, you know, this just brings up so many questions that the book don't, it kind of sort of answers, you know, because I'm hearing different things, you know, like for me, I live in a mobile home. And so with my Avon business, it was to my understanding, I claim half of all my home expenses. <laughs> See, this brings up a lot of questions here, like mm -hmm. my internet, my cell phone, my gas, electric, water. Mm -hmm. But if you read that first thing, claiming the home office is a red flag. So watch yourself. Ask your ask yeah. your accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, it I read that too, because I you know, um, because it, it said claiming your home office is a red flag. But then um, you read further down, and that said it says although uh, although um, true many years ago, changes in in the law have since prevented the IRS from treating all home business operations as suspicious. So they're not really, it doesn't do the red flag with the home office anymore. It's basically what that as said. Much, as much, not but as I'll much. Still yeah. check with your accountant or whoever. Are, are you the only one that does your taxes, Roger? Uh, I'm my own accountant. 
your, your I don't account. trust anybody. I don't trust anybody with my numbers, my yeah. finances. That's just a me thing. Well, I do my own numbers and I bring them to my accountant. And then he'll tell me, you know, that's great. That's broken down correctly. And then he'll say, you know, you can claim this, you can do this, you can do that. Um, and tell me what else I could add on if I hadn't already. Mm -hmm. But the office, I mean, it has to be a closed door. You got to know it's got to be just exclusive just to your um, customers and not your house use. Um, there's little restrictions that I just didn't even play with. So mm -hmm. I still do my phone, my cell phone, because yeah. you have a house phone, you don't even probably use a house phone still. So you still can use your cell phone as uh, an expense. Um, well, and my cell phone is definitely an expense. Dinner. Everybody's down on it. Right. right, and your you're using. cell phone bill can be partly uh, the expense too, because if that's what you use for, I mean, that's the only thing I have is my cell. We don't have a landline since, mm -hmm. you know, when we moved, we just got cells and. Because I remember yeah. last year, last year's taxes when I did claim it, I took the easy way of claiming it for my office. There's two different ways you could do it. You break down everything, but I took the easier way that, they ask you how many square feet your office is, mm -hmm. and that's what you claim. <laughs> that's what I did it last year. And I did my taxes through Credit Karma last year, so. Okay. I just claimed it by the square footage of the office. I didn't claim it by, in particular, breaking down to the other one. That's too much of a headache. <laughs> it is. I seem to get more when I broke it down, and that's why I don't mind doing the headache. <laughs> I do get more deductions when I break it all down. And then I don't take that chance of that red flag by claiming it as an office. But um, that's just what I sat down with my accountant and went over and just better to go the safe route. Same with your car, you know, you can do your miles or you can do the deduction of your vehicle. You cannot do both or that's a major red flag. So well, you see, that's the reason why I was looking for the spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. That was actually a big reason why I was looking for the spreadsheet to see if I could try to get more deductions than what I did last year. So, mm -hmm. yeah, your ink for your ink cartridge, your cell phone, your miles, your, you know, any kind of gifts you give to your downline, anything you did business wise, um, you can claim as well if it was related to sitting down to eat food with your, you know, downline or your customers, you can claim that food expense. Save all your receipts, like we were talking with those little files, and put everything in there. One of the reasons why I wanted to, that I need to get this redone this year is because last year, after I joined the, my local chamber of commerce, um, they were having this uh, fundraising. It's an annual thing, fundraising auction dinner type deal. It was at a winery, and I donated a gift basket. Value uh, retail value was almost three hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And so, so that I could keep track of that, I also then went on to Avon now with a blank in the with, created, loaded up a blank invoice so I could enter all the products in from that gift basket so that I'd have the actual total on it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I take a picture of my gift baskets and put them in a file with that attached to it, an invoice, like you were just saying. So then I have everything tallied together with a picture so they, you know, I could whip up tons of invoices, but is there really a basket? So I always back myself up with a picture so they can see that I actually did have a physical basket that I gave. Yeah. So, with the flyer for the organization. I know one of the other things I'll be able to do is a tax deduction. I do believe, Don, you might be able to help me on this one, is the Chamber of Commerce membership. Yes, that's a business expense. Okay. And this Definitely. is... You can claim these book costs and what you put in for this as well. Right, right. And the it convention, looks. when you went to the convention last year, even though it was digital and we didn't go anywhere, you can deduct that expense, yeah, that business cost. It. The virtual. Mm -hmm. Yep, we had to pay yeah. to get in. So, yeah. Okay, so the next, because uh, there was four readings. So the Build It Big with Tax Incentives was page 165. Any, any thoughts on that reading? I go into a lot of detail on these. This is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. All you guys yeah, talked about. Yeah, I mean, this, 
Uh, it gets down to some pretty good detail about the things that you can or can't or should or shouldn't, um, mm -hmm. which you guys all seem to pretty much know already. But um, this gives you some good options. It's good. Well, good. yeah, it talks about the two different types of tax deductions, the direct and the indirect. Mm -hmm. um, and then I think you know, this be pretty formal and pretty, pretty informative. I mean, yeah, you know, because yeah. I've been having a lot of questions. I've, I've been reading, you know, from last week's lesson carrying on into this week's brought up a lot of questions. And this chapter um, actually answered a few, quite a few of those questions already. So, you know, I may actually go to like uh, H&R Block or something for taxes this time around, because I think I might need an accountant this time. <laughs> yeah, yeah you know, definitely. Yeah, I have lots of helpers. Well, had lots of helpers. They all kind of lost their positions, so they're not even at a workplace anymore. They're at home, or they lost their position. But when I had helpers, there's only a certain amount of um, discounted items you can give to people and claim. And then if you have helpers and you're paying them, you have to claim them as employees. There's a lot of different breakdowns to really. You got to watch how you break that down so right there's a lot of in deep depth stuff that you got to know yeah it's I, almost yeah. isn't it i mean what i've heard that it's almost better to pay with with gifts than uh like money mm -hmm. or helpers yep i don't give any money Mm -hmm. because I don't want it to be in yeah uh, because yeah. then then you got a whole nother ball game you got a whole nother category taxes, yes you have to pay taxes to them and deduct it from them and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so that's a good thought to think you know as you I mean even what we've talked about we've thought about you know getting somebody to label our books you know because we do still send out a lot of books and just getting like a high school student or something like that to do that, um, you know, you got to take all that into consideration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting here, no helpers, no nothing, me doing everything. I almost feel like I almost feel, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, and think about this in the future as you grow you know, what, what angles do you want to take? Because, you know, you're not going to be at the level you're at right now. You're going to, you know, be growing your business, you know, probably and um, more customers, more things, more everything. So, mm -hmm. you know, so. And I'm a lot like you, Roger. I like to have my hands in, in control of what I'm doing document wise. So when I say exactly. helpers, it's not people putting things on my books or doing running my deliver. It's like somebody at an office that takes a group of books, spreads them out to their office. And I come meet that one person. She gets a discount on her purchases because she actually collected all the checks and gave all those orders out to those people. She gave the books out to it's a one stop. Not right. 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 Ten so orders. it's a customer helper is the category. Yes. So, so not a business helper. helper. Not, yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Nope. I got to have my own hand in my own soup bowl only <laughs> to boggle my brain to you know you double check it anyway is how I am so why not just do it and know that it's done mm -hmm. so. yeah and some of that is the skills of releasing you know delegating and releasing I know that Lisa Wilbur talked about this oh, in in, yeah. in how she you know has help or she has actually employees you know, yes. that do that mail out her, you know, goody things to all of her team members and things like that. So yeah, yeah. things like that. Okay, so let's go back to the workbook on page 139 um, or the first page of Build Your Prosperity. In reviewing over that, um, was there, what stood out for you? My workbook must be a little different. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what does it say in the beginning of yours? That oh, you're... okay. Uh, well, after, after the title, the reading material, focus on money skills. Okay. 
Yep, mine yes. says that too. Okay. And then and then the next page is exploration and integration. So okay. it it talks about access, your money skills, and then it's got that chart in there on the vet, you know, going through all those uh, points that we are talking about, value, control, saving, investing, earning, shielding, and sharing. Okay. Yep. You know, Mine has all that. Chart. Do you always do that? Do you sometimes do that? Do you never do that? You know, um, did, did you go through that? Anything you want to share on that? I particularly like the financial organization checklist. Mm -hmm. It's a good way to keep it's okay. a good way to set up a reminder so to make sure you can check off each thing that you do so that you know that it's done. That's right. Instead of thinking, oh, God, did I deposit that money or not? You know, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You could do that by campaign, right? You could set that up for, by campaign. Yeah, then, okay, it says I designate one credit card that I, exclude, that I use exclusively for my business. I just got approved for that credit card today. Okay. Awesome. Strictly for my Avon business. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Yes. Did you I, have the, points? I have the Avon uh -huh. credit card that they just deposit my leadership money into. Well, that's a debit but card. That, that's, that's a debit. debit. He's saying yeah, that's, that a credit that's, card. That's, yeah, I can't off. deposit my own money in that. That's only the Avon earnings that go in there. Well, this card comes with cash back. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's no, what I got is the points. Right, right. Those right. Points. That's yeah. how I do my Christmas shopping. I put all my orders, my pay for my orders on that card. And I've already collected the money from everybody. And then mm -hmm. I just pay for it on that card and I rack all those points up. Yeah. <laughs> so I buy gift cards galore at Christmas time for my son and his girlfriend and hundreds of dollars worth. Yeah, so it pays off at the end. Well, because see, I'm trying to rebuild my credit, and this card's actually going to help. Absolutely. You know, because um, I still pay my Avon, I still pay my Avon bill with uh, my checking account. You know, actually, I paid for it at the this way. I plan on building my credit. You know, pay for my Avon order with the credit card, and then go straight into my checking account, and um. And just have it start, uh, you know, schedule the payment because I'm trying to rebuild my credit. I've had some bad things in my credit that's starting to fall off. And, you yeah. know, this card, this new card that I'm getting is at a much lower interest rate, <laughs> much lower. Right. And as long as you're not spending on it, it's actually your Avon orders. You're not going to be getting in any kind of issues. You're actually just building your credit with that and getting right. those yeah. cash back and points. So that's awesome. Yeah. Because you can use the money you collect that pays it off, and 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 then the earnings are right there. Yeah, the yeah. money that I collect, the money that I collect, what goes into my Avon checking account. This is what I'm going to do it. Then, then, when I have to pay the Avon bill, I pull out that new credit card to pay it, and then the next day I go into that credit card's website from my checking account, pay the balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the money will still get the money will still get deposited into my checking account. Mm -hmm. You know, and no so interest to pay for the credit card payment. Right, yep. right. That's what I do. It really works. It's nice getting that bonus at the end. <laughs> right, right. And it's it's legit. You're not scamming and there's anything. people that use you know those type of credit cards too, and it gets them airfare, uh, mm -hmm. you know, type of points as well so whenever we do go back to a convention then those points that you get from using that form of credit card can pay for your trip to convention so i use our blue green credit card because the only thing i we charge anything on is all my avon stuff so when i make my payments it all goes on that card when i buy a prop or something that i need for the office for avon it goes on that card. If I need supplies for Avon, it goes on that card. Um, everything goes on that card. And then we pay it out of the account, the same account that um, that Avon is putting my online sales into. So mm -hmm. it, it all comes out of the same account. And what that does for my blue green account is it keeps our rate low and it gives us points so that we can travel. Exactly yeah. what you were saying. So we can use our points to get discounts on hotels. That's what we do. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it keeps everything organized for you when it comes time for tax season to actually right. look everything yeah, over. Got in one all place. your transactions there. Yeah. Everything on that card is only Avon. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 It makes, makes a world of a difference for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So then when I get that card, I'm going to be using a permanent marker as a reminder to myself by writing Avon only on the card. So, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I actually cracked my card. I don't have a card. I don't, I do not have a card. So I only just automatically pay with that card with it saved in my Avon file. Ah. And then I just, it's a saved card in there and I, I do that and just Ooh, update that. Huh? Yeah, I just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So um, the next page though, where after the administrative and bookkeeping, it also gave you um, more steps for closing out each month and, you know, how that can, can direct you and what to, you know, what to keep, what to update, what to, you know, and do it on a monthly basis, if not a campaign basis. That's a little easier because then you're not doing it 24 times. You're only doing it, you know, 12. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah deal well on that checklist that one that told you stood out for me is that i do have to make it a point that i'm actually gonna set a time once an order arrives in a whole bit i need to actually set a time to specifically for getting the paperwork so i don't have to deal with what i'm going to be dealing with shortly here entering all last 26 campaigns <laughs> you know that's gonna yeah. be a real pain well, it does say one of the things is I use a financial software program designed specifically for home-based business owners and direct sellers. So that's exactly, you know, what you were sharing with us, Roger. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. So, um, yeah, it was a lot of, a lot of things in there to kind of, well, perfect this time of the year that we're going over this too, you know, it's kind of fitting because <laughs> we started a new year. And so, you know, if you weren't doing it for last year, like Roger said, it's a great thing to, you know, to just have, maybe make some copies of these pages or something. And that way you've got a reminder, you know, um, to what to follow up with and everything. Well, even, uh, even this thing that says um, I've completed the following for the month of, you, mm -hmm. you just you just make a Xerox copy of that, make 12 of them, and then yeah. you know, tack it on to the next month so that this is like the first thing you see when you look at the first. And it's like, oh, yeah, I got to yeah. do this for the last month. Right, right. Um, yeah. If then you have a folder or, uh, you know, yeah. something that you're keeping all of your statement, your invoices in and things like that could yep. be attached right to there. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah, man. That bill organizer I was telling you guys about with each month and you just slide your receipts in each month in that bill organizer. I got it at the dollar store. Mm -hmm. And then each month I just slide out all those and file them into my Excel spreadsheet. So it makes it a lot easier. Sometimes every three months, you know, you don't do it every month. Sometimes it's like, right. <laughs> so, but it yes. doesn't. Yes, let's be truthful time. here. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> there's been times that there's been six months, so, but it's yeah. all in a, where I know where it is, where I just got to whip it out. It takes, you know, 25 minutes to sit down because you've got a pattern. You've already got everything where it needs to be. You pull it out and you put it into the Excel spreadsheet. So right. having that organization is definitely been yeah, a, like, something that I need to do I want to, even if I have to create it myself is to create like a spreadsheet of being able to keep track of what you have in your inventory you know mm -hmm. I just yeah. haven't figured out exactly how I'm going to do that yet because it says under uh, the steps for closing out each month receipts filed and inventory counted mm -hmm. what I do is every campaign if I buy something to have in stock I highlight that on the invoice when after I print the invoice then if I didn't tr track it at that current time at least I can go back and see the highlighted I also go into Avon and go underneath my name on what I purchased if it was something that was for in stock out of the what's new or whatever and then I can kind of keep track of it that way right and I have, when I when I create an order 
I have a category instead of a name, I have demos. I have my name, I have Darwin's name, that type of thing, so that that is already um, filed under that category. Yep, you can just print it and it's already divided. So right. much nicer to have it organized that way. Yeah, I started doing that. I don't know why I stepped away from that, but that's what's gonna be creating my headache a little bit more. Because Don was telling me about that last year. I actually created one for demos and then, um, you know, and then one separately with my name again, you know, so I separate what's for me, what was demos, what's customers. Right, right. I've got a category two of sales aids and I put my uh, samples in there. I put my books in there. Um, anything like that that I'm ordering um, goes into that category too for under that name. Does Avon give you then a total of those customers? Or do you th then just take your receipts and add them up? We just go from the receipts. The invoice yeah. it tells okay. you how many customers on the invoices. I did discover that it tells you how many customer orders were on that invoice. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, you get, when you look at your invoices, say number of customers, it would say like two, three, four, five, whatever it is. So that's what kind of helps out too. Yeah, but what she was saying was like for all the demos that I order for the for the year, does it does it total up? It will oh. for the demos, which is nice because that's broken down at the end of your right on your invoice. But I'm mm -hmm. saying on the receipt that I create, I create like instead of a customer receipt in right. you know the web office, it's a demo demo because you got to use two. <laughs> two names so mine is yeah. demo demo and sales aids mm -hmm. and, and then uh whoever you know if i'm buying something for my daughter i i create a receipt for her i create a receipt with her name and that type of thing so yeah see what last year what i did is i relied on the category each category that's on our invoices mm -hmm. you know that you know there are 40 percent commissions 25 sales tools um business tools demos, you know, because they're all divided up on our invoices already. Yeah. But if you're ordering for a customer, like sometimes I offer my customer to order early. So then that would go under her name instead of in my demo demo uh, category. So mm -hmm. I'm thinking about that part of it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, I, I mean, you know, I it's, do it's, that too. yeah, it's whatever works for you. It's, it's kind of like how detailed do you want to get, or do you want to just make notation of your invoice that you print, uh, you know, when you print that every campaign, you know, you can make notations on the invoice and then you just either go back through that or keep record of it in a spreadsheet, like what you're talking about. Okay, so what what else in this uh, section do we need to cover? Otherwise, we we might be ending early tonight. If that, <laughs> yeah, I think it's just thoroughly breaking it down what works best for you and um, really digging a little deeper on the topic on our own, getting the files going. And I know it's a pain, Roger, in the beginning, but once you start doing that spreadsheet, it will be such a reliever once you do it this year oh, and have it all organized. Next year, yeah, you'll yeah. be like, yes, I'm so glad I did that. Yeah, <laughs> it will pay off please. in the end. So, uh, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> so it says it my the same thing on the moving forward. I'm sorry, did someone else want to add something? Go ahead, Don. Go ahead. Oh, I was just I was saying, say not important. knowing that you are in control of your business finances has a powerfully positive impact on your financial destiny your attitude, and your success. This empowering experience will help you see your business opportunity in a whole new light. That's kind of what you said, Christine, and likely encourage you to aim for even greater levels of wealth and achievement. Yes, it breaks it down. It shows you what you're making income-wise each campaign as well. You look a little deeper into, oh, I need to make more with this, or I did good with this campaign. What did I do different in that campaign? I'm going to do more of that. It just, it really does uh, break everything down a little bit more. I'm going to cut down on the number of 
of demos I buy. Right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, definitely, one for me. yeah, definitely cutting down on that, especially at Christmas time. Oh. <laughs> if they, um, you know, make their clothes not quite so cute, right? So we want everything. <laughs> and all these new things coming out, it's like, you know, we got to get all the essential oils now. So it's like, I know. I can't wait exactly. for that. That's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. I mean, on the order I put in uh, Saturday, I think it was, I've got uh, two of the CBD body oil, dry body oils on there because you get the free bomb and one of those goes to my customer. Mm -hmm. I'm glad we got the Watch News yeah. back because now yeah. that she goes up, so now when I go to bring her order over to her, I'm going to let her take a quick look through my what's new. You know, this is one of my bestie customers. So she likes it. He's got this thing. She just loves being able to get things before they come out in the brochure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me but wrap yeah. this up and then we can shut off the recording and we can talk any more about what we want. Next week, um, is everybody okay with doing the life balance or do you want to do more than one session? Well, we can always move into the second session if we blow through the first one. Yeah, the it's life balance and the art of time mastery. So yeah, that's gonna be, we might wanna be real involved in that one. So we learn how to really utilize every minute that we've got, you know. I, right, right. So, you know, wasting. what time permits, you know, we can do life balance. There is, again, five readings on that. So um, that it's is a big one. That's a kind of a big one. And yeah, I just say, at, why don't we just stick with that one if it's that big? Yeah, the life balance. So that would be page 144 through 151. Uh, so that's quite, quite a large a number of pages as well in the workbook. So we'll plan on doing that. So then um, you, you that are watching this replay, you know what we're going to do next time. And um, so that is it for tonight. I'm going to stop the recording.